the forehead of your robot. Have you ever come across the TV program called, Hobby Bobby? It was a tacky and informative kids show with a wacky set of characters, which was broadcasted in the UK from the late 80s to the early 90s. In case if you're wondering, it's quite similar to Rainbow, which is a puppet show made for Tim's television and aired on ITV during its children's block between 1972 to 1992. Perhaps you anticipate that this will be one of those educational programs for children that focuses on introducing fundamental concepts or imparting safety tips. There are those who believe that the content intended for children is significantly darker and serious. The main cast consisted of six characters, and most of them were unique in appearance. Bobby, the primary character in the series, is a pink butterfly puppet. He had a round red nose, cherry red hair, and black and yellow antennas on his head. He wore a bright red tuxedo and had pink and red butterfly wings on his back. Sophie, a character in the show who plays the role of a female leopard, is depicted as a kind and excessively amiable assistant. She exudes a nurturing persona that could be likened to a mother figure. Think of Gia, the circus jaguar from Madagascar 3, except with blue eyes, no necklace, and was colored in a banana yellow hue, with the patterns on her fur being black and brown. She speaks with a thick English accent, though it's really understandable despite being very British. Boris, who is a green-skinned hillbilly puppet, likes to sing songs with the other characters in his musical numbers. He was holding an acoustic guitar for the songs provided. Mr. Webb, a character made in a claymation style, and depicted as a blue spider sporting a black fedora, seems to exude some level of enthusiasm. Mrs. Webb, the wife of Mr. Webb, is a pink spider wearing a sun hat and holding a red purse. She is also animated in clay as well. David, the show's only human child in the cast, is about seven years of age, has brown hair and blue eyes, and sports a gray sweatshirt, blue trousers, and black and white sneakers. Between the years 1989 and 1993, the program made its first appearance and was broadcasted on the children's BBC, CBBC, block on BBC One. During that time span, it was only aired for a total of 15 episodes. Following the show's cancellation, it appeared to disappear completely, as if it were a Mandela effect. The final episodes were found to be unsettling by those who professed to have watched the show. The program initially appears ordinary, but as the episodes progressed, it becomes increasingly disturbing for the primary audience consisting of young children. The opening of the show would be marked by a theme tune that merged traditional 2D animation with the early CGI technology, which it was almost possible at the time. It would feature the main characters embarking on a range of exciting adventures after waking up. The introduction takes place solely at the beginning of each episode. Episode 1, Manners, 1989. Although insignificant, it seems like the vibrant characters in their house are discussing the virtues of politeness and forbearance, including using courteous terms like please and expressing gratitude, as well as having patience without complaining. Episode 2, Birthdays, 1990. Essentially, the discussion among the characters is focused on the celebration of David's birthday. Furthermore, David reached the age of eight during the airing of this particular episode. Sophie, the leopard, engaged in a conversation with David regarding the gifts he would receive on his birthday. In a gentle and subdued manner that bore resemblance to that of a maternal figure, she conversed with him using a soft and quiet tone. Sophie gave David a kiss on the forehead after their conversation, although this display wasn't expected for a program aimed at children. Episode 3, Gardening, 1990. The characters were getting ready to cultivate their garden for the Harvest Festival, relying on basic equipment such as spades, watering cans, and plant seeds. In a certain scene, Boris initiates a musical number of Harvest for the World by the Christians. Bobby and Sophie retrieved their assorted musical equipment while the melody commenced, and the claymation spiders along with David seemed to delight in the tune. Episode 4, Animals, 1990. They discussed why certain creatures exist on Earth, as they are commonly found. 
During the episode, Sophie discussed big cats, which are wild feline predators found in various natural habitats across the globe. She identified herself as a leopard, one of the distinctive types of big cats. Mr. and Mrs. Webb received a subject about bugs, including spiders and other similar species too. Episode 5, Solids, Liquids and Gases, 1990. Initially, the main characters conversed about solid substances such as stones, wood, metal and so on. During the conversation, they focused on typical liquids like water, milk, blood, nothing controversial about that, oil, and other common liquids. Prior to the conclusion, they engaged in a discussion regarding various gases such as air, smoke, steam and the like. Episode 6, Addition and Subtraction, 1991. This is a standard episode of a preschool program that focuses on educating children about mathematics and numerical concepts. The show additionally included segments entirely animated with primitive CGI, indicating the number of added or removed objects. Episode 7, Luck, 1991. The episode in question was a St. Patrick's Day special. The cast chanced upon a pot filled with wealth that was producing a beautiful rainbow, and encountered a leprechaun puppet, who subsequently spoke about St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March, and other luck-related subjects. Episode 8, Going Fishing, 1991. The cast members geared up for their upcoming fishing expedition. The scenario lacked excitement until David stumbled and plunged into the water. The boy cried out frantically for help, before Sophie swiftly intervened to rescue the poor kid. Sophie provided a compassionate form of comfort to David, who was in tears. Episode 9, Cooking and Baking, 1991. They provided you with fundamental basics to prepare tasty dishes and pastries. One cannot help but find it hilarious that Sophie committed a great mishap when she unintentionally overcooked the cake by setting the oven degrees too high. Sophie expressed remorse to all those affected by her unfortunate mistake, and they granted her forgiveness and acknowledged it as an accident. Episode 10, Time, 1992. You were educated on clocks and the various time periods including morning, noon, afternoon, evening, night and midnight. We are always aware of how the world operates, but what is the reason behind it? Episode 11, Weather, 1992. In this episode, the discussion revolved solely around the various weather conditions that can occasionally occur in different parts of the world including rain, thunderstorms, hurricanes, snow, blizzards, among other topics. In a particular scene, Bubby was hit by a powerful gust of wind, but fortunately survived. Additionally, the characters found themselves seeking refuge in the basement of their home as a hurricane raged from outside. Episode 12, Injuries, 1992. This particular episode is remarkably shocking to the very audience it was intended for. In one scene, a young girl named Alice, who was a new character to the show, stumbled and toppled to the ground while attempting to jump rope. It was so convincing that the injury she sustained did not appear to be acting in the slightest. The protagonists hurried in the direction of the underprivileged girl. Sophie asked Alice what was troubling her. Alice talked about her admission of not being skilled in jump rope, so she suffered serious wounds bearing scars, cuts and bruises following the fall. Most of the characters discuss methods of being diligent and avoiding potential sources of severe injury or harm. The girl then received bandages on her injuries in the end of the episode. Episode 13, Growing Up, 1992. They discussed the significant impact of growing up on our existence as human beings. There are several subjects that include the stages of infancy, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, middle age, and seniority. However, a gloomy subject that is often discussed is the inevitability of death in elderly individuals. But what's even more surprising is that they delved into the subject of puberty, which is often deemed as exaggerated and inappropriate for a show intended for children, much like many others. Episode 14, Bullying and Abuse, 1993. Out of all the others, this specific one exhibits the highest level of violence. One particular instance in which David was at school, and experienced severe bullying from the show's new antagonist named Daniel, who is apparently a very older boy compared to David. 
Daniel was using cruel and vicious insults toward David, labeling him as the most worthless kid in the world, while considering him to be a social outcast. Subsequently, Daniel viciously attacks the unfortunate David, who wails and sobs in the most heartbreaking manner. To anyone, it appeared that this is not a typical form of school bullying, or even acting in this series. Upon arriving, the characters were shocked to find David in a pitiable condition, bearing evident signs of physical assault, such as a bruised nose gushing blood. Sophie approaches the beaten boy and asks what happened and what's wrong. David claimed to have been bullied by the older boy and was incapacitated. Upon hearing his words, they were taken aback, and the scene abruptly shifted to what appeared to be a hospital room. Sophie, dressed in her nurse uniform, was applying plasters, referred to as band-aids in the US, and bandages to David while being perched on the hospital bench. Following that, the characters engaged in a discussion on the unnecessary nature of bullying and abusing innocent individuals. In the concluding scenes, Daniel grasps the importance of refraining from hurting others, and offers his sincere apologies to David as he soon forgives him. Episode 15, Trauma, 1993. This marks the ultimate conclusion of this peculiar show, and it proves to be the most disturbing and mature of them all. The characters discussed the challenging nature of dealing with personal fears, such as the belief that scary movies are not purely real. The episode went on as normal until there arose a commotion of boisterous thumping noises from outdoors, leading the characters to scream in terror, and ponder the origin of such an unpleasant disturbance. What was that noise? Sophie exclaimed in her thick British accent. Our household is potentially at risk from a dangerous entity approaching, Bobby said. I have a sore feeling about this, Boris said in his goofy country accent. I'm so scared. David bellowed. There is some kind of scary man outside. Don't worry, Davy. Sophie comforted. We could seek refuge in the basement, alert the authorities, and thus break free from the grasp of this delinquent. As they rushed down to the basement, the door to the front yard busted open, unveiling a clown brandishing a chainsaw stained with blood. His menacing appearance is disturbing than what most viewers saw. The clown possesses protruding red irised eyes that are bloodshot, along with black hair, a big crimson hued nose, and sharp bloodied teeth. The clothing he wore, which was typical of clowns, was dull, scattered, ripped, dirty, and covered what appeared to be blood. And so on, the basement was ultimately reached by the cast, except for Bobby, Boris and the claymation spiders, who fell over and couldn't stand back up. The scene changes to the basement, where Sophie secures the door and suddenly hears the gruesome sounds of blood splattering and the blood-curdling screams of the four victims as they are attacked by the killer clown. Oh no! Sophie muttered softly. It's too late now. She also perceived the sound of David's cries of fear. I think he's coming after us. David cried quietly. Sophie hugged the weeping young lad and assured him that she would contact the police, so they could be rescued. Having retrieved a vintage cell phone, the leopard proceeded to dial 999, the designated emergency number of the UK. Unfortunately, the untimely situation had already surfaced by the time she completed dialing. The basement door was set ablaze by the clown, who wielded a flamethrower, resulting in significant fire damage throughout the household. Sophie and David's gut-wrenching screams were sounded as the fire engulfed the entire house, while the clown hastily fled the scene. The clown's maniacal laughter is heard as the house was all consumed in flames, and the final episode came to a close. The 15th and final episode of this obscure children's show shocked many viewers with its inclusion of adult themes like murder, arson, and extreme violence in an effort to make the subsequent episodes exceptionally morbid, disturbing, and traumatic. The show was cancelled and lost due to that very reason. Occasionally, lost media can be stumbled upon within the hidden realms of the internet, known as the dark web, such as banned episodes of known shows and deleted scenes from popular movies. In my opinion, this dreadful show could potentially be found on the aforementioned dark web somehow. Anyway, who on earth in the United Kingdom would produce such twisted episodes for a children's program, and then broadcast it on the children's BBC block? 
The only belief is that after the final episode, the actors and puppeteers were now deceased after its cut, and the man portraying the clown was in fact identified as a perpetrator of multiple acts of homicide. It's quite uncertain, in all honesty, 